Hey, all you cool cats and kittens out there in uh, literature land. Uh, you're on the mic with Mr. Cook. Uh, I'm going to try and hype up my hype up my uh, little um, introduction and uh, my lessons here. we got a great chapter today. Chapter three is pretty short. Uh, it's fun. It's action packed. Um, I love it. And there's uh, some symbolism that gets dropped on us that we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to recommend right now you guys go ahead and get your chapter three and chapter four response questions into notability. As I'm going through our little conversation uh, today, um, just a recap. So in chapter one, we have Jonas <clears throat> um, and we're being introduced to his community, uh, some of the jobs. Chapter two, uh, mom, dad and Jonas are having this long, uh, longer conversation about the ceremony of 12. Uh, the author really lays out some stuff. They're dropping some of those um, F-bombs in your lap, some of those foreshadowing bombs. Also in chapter one, we had some flashback. Um, we've talked about some odd vocabulary uh, that kind of plays along in the book. Um, and uh, so, and we're going to continue on with that today. Um, I love this book, by the way. I love reading it. I love doing voices. And it's kind of a unique opportunity for me right now uh, to be in <clears throat> with being under this quarantine or lockdown, whatever it is, and being able to read every chapter. Now, I do have to tell you, if you've done the math, we only have so many weeks left of um, of school um, through e-learning, and we are going to finish this book. So what's going to happen is we're going to start upping how many chapters um, to be read a week. Now, a week, not an e-learning day. This is something you can do kind of like on your own. In class, we were able to get through, in a 45-minute session, we were able to get through a chapter and a half to two chapters. So we're going to up the chapters <clears throat> that we're going to read, but it's per week. Um, uh, I will be doing lessons over certain chapters, but it's just, it's a guideline. Just make sure you're up on it by the time we take assessments and you're good to go. Um, you've got plenty of time. Um, I want this reading part to be relaxing for you. Okay. Uh, enjoying. Okay. Um, just enjoy this book as much as I do. So here's our, <clears throat> our chapter question. Excuse me. I have a little raspy throat right now. Um, Take a look at this passage, and he has funny eyes like yours, Jonas. Jonas glared at her. He didn't like that she had mentioned his eyes. This is foreshadowing. It's one of those F-bombs. It's one of our, our great F-words, as well as symbolism. If you remember in The Outsiders, we talked about the eyes. When an author mentions eyes, eyes are a window to the soul. That means you're looking in their eyes and it tells you about their soul. It tells you about who they are. You remember Dally had those blazing ice eyes, which he had that cold heart, just kind of like, you know, iced over. <clears throat> Johnny had black eyes basically, which means like in black is that symbol for death. We need to pay attention to what the eyes of Gabriel, that's the he that's being referred to. Lily is referring to he being Gabriel. So her dad does bring Gabriel home and Jonas's eyes. And Lois Lowry actually gives this great, great explanation about Jonas's eyes and Gabriel's eyes. And it's this really cool passage that, that we'll point out. It says, who is he? And well, I kind of gave that one away. And what do we learn about Jonas's eyes? That one we have not done. It says, why do you feel uncomfortable or why does Jonas feel uncomfortable when Lily says these words? Okay. Uh, what do we know? Ooh, look, birth mothers. Hey, that's something we haven't seen before. And I was always like, yo, where the mom's at? Well, there you go. We're going to find out three details about birth mothers, how moms apply or actually birth mothers, not necessarily moms, but how birth mothers apply to the society as a whole, um, as well as why Jonas's dad is a nurturer and how this works. Okay. Uh, number three, we're going to talk about character traits with evidence. Uh, we're going to do a character trait for Lily. Now, if you remember correctly, a character trait is what a character is like. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so character traits, like you could say, Hey, what does Mr. Cook like? Well, he's hilarious. <gasps> wink, wink. Uh, he is energetic. You know, we can, I, we could probably uh, do that. And he is loud. I've been called loud so many times in my life. I don't know why people would call me loud, but they do. Um, you said, Mr. Cook, uh, what's the trait? Loud. What's evidence from the text? Uh, he speaks at a very loud, um, he speaks at a very loud uh, caliber all the time. I can hear him through Mrs. Nelson's wall or Miss Nelson's wall. I can hear his music through Miss Nelson's wall. I can hear him down the hallway. I can, you know, 
if I had him as a coach, you could hear him all the way across the, the earth. I'm just playing. That's kind of what we're looking for for character traits. Um, and summarize, here we go. Um, just for an instant, it had changed in midair, he remembered. Now, this is a, a scene between Asher and Jonas that you need to pay attention to. Um, and it says, some of the events of what happened. So who, I just told you, it's it's Jonas and Asher. I just want you to be aware. We're reading with questions in mind, so we can write that down. What, when, and why, and where. So like, what happens? Um, when does it happen, and where does it happen? Last but not least, we have author's tone. Um, reread the last sentence of chapter th of chapter three. So you're going to reread the last sentence of chapter three. And what tone does the narrator use to end this chapter? <clears throat> okay. So that's what we're looking for. I love this chapter. It's great uh, to get in there. So you guys should be ready um, to go with this. Okay. This is a shorter chapter. Shouldn't take long. As soon as I get done yapping. Chapter three, the giver. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, look. Lily squealed in delight. Isn't he cute? Look how tiny he is. He has funny eyes like yours, Jonas. Jonas glared at her. He didn't like it that she had mentioned his eyes. Whoa. He waited for his father to chastise Lily, but father was busy unstrapping the carrying basket, you know, the thing that they carry him from the back of his bicycle. So even parents have bicycles. Not just kids, but parents. Jonas walked over to look. It was the first thing Jonas noticed as he looked at the new child peering up curiously from the basket. The pale eyes. Pale. Almost every citizen in the community had dark eyes. So, also you need to start paying attention to how they start describing things. Jonas is describing things. Pale eyes, but almost everybody else in the community had dark eyes. Now, Lois Lowry is taking extreme measures to draw attention to eyes. This is not just a fleeting thing that she wants you to look at. That She wants you to pay attention to the eyes. They have a big, deeper meaning. They always do. If an author mentions eyes, there is a specific purpose, okay? In any work of literature, when they mention eyes or eye color. <clears throat> uh, where were we at? His parents had dark eyes, and Lily did, and so did all of the group members and friends. But there were a few exceptions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, Jonas himself and a female five who he had noticed had the different lighter eyes. Okay? So, so far in this community, the kid who comes in, Jonas and a female five, have pale colored eyes. It lets you know that it's an anomaly. And there's something special about it. So pay attention. No one mentioned such things. It was not a rule, but was considered rude to call attention to things that were unsettling or different about individuals. Lily, he decided, would have to learn that soon. Or she would be called in for chastisement because of her insensitive character. So there's the first introduction to eyes. And it's a, it's a paragraph. She dedicates a paragraph out of nowhere to tell you that three people in this community, the kid, Jonas, and this female five, have light-colored eyes. Okay. Father put his bike into the port. Then he picked up the basket and carried it into the house. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lily followed behind, but she glanced back over her shoulder at Jonas and teased. Maybe he had the same birth mother as you. Jonas shrugged. He followed them inside but he had been startled by the new child's eyes. Here it is again. Mirrors were rare in the community. They weren't forbidden, so they don't have mirrors very often. Some of you guys were like, I like the mirror. Oh, look at me. We're taking selfies. You know, they're not forbidden, and obviously they don't have phones, but they're rare. But there was no real need for them. And Jonas had simply never bothered to look at himself very often when he found himself in a location where a mirror existed. Now, seeing the new child and its expression, he was reminded that the light eyes were not only a rarity, but gave the one who had them a certain look. And he's going to go on and discuss this. Again, this is a big chunk. So I would highlight this and I would say light eyes. I would highlight rarity. Okay, they're a rare three people. 
three people in this community. He says it gave them a certain look. What was it? Depth, he decided. This is the biggest foreshadowing bomb ever. Like, I love this. I, I'm, I have goosebumps right now that I get to tell you this. Who had them a certain look? What was it? Depth, he decided. As if one were looking into clear water of the river, down to the bottom, where things might lurk, which hadn't been discovered yet. That to me is just beautiful writing. <clears throat> so basically what it's saying is you're looking into this child's eyes and they're so clear. They're so pale. It's like looking into the bottom of a river. Like it's so neat when you can look into an ocean and you can see down to the bottom and you can see all the life in there. And you can see they're so clear. It says it's like looking into the clear water of the river down to the bottom. So down all the way to the bottom because you can't always see down to the bottom. It says where things might lurk, which hadn't been discovered yet. That is so true in this story because there are things that have not been discovered yet. I just think that is the coolest piece of writing that an author can do. Just She's looking into this child's eyes and it's like looking into clear water down to a river and there's things that down there that lurk that haven't been discovered yet. And that's exactly what happens in this story. I think that is so neat. So you have that symbolism, that light colored eye is a symbolism, but at the same time, you have this foreshadowing help happening too. Oh, oh man, I just get so excited about this. It's just so neat. So now Jonas is back. He's like, he felt self-conscious realizing that he too had that look. He had that deep look. He went to his desk pretending not to be interested in the new child. On the other side of the room, mother and Lily were bending over to watch his father unwrapped its blanket, its blanket. <clears throat> What's his comfort object called? Lily asked, picking up the stuffed creature who had been placed beside the new child in the basket. Remember, they don't know what animals are, so she's looking at it. No one she knows is like an elephant and a bear. That's about it. Father glanced at it. Um, hippo, he said. Lily giggled at the strange word. Hippo, she repeated, and put the comfort <clears throat> object down. She peered at the unwrapped new child who waved its arms. I think new children are so cute, Lily said. I hope I get assigned to be a birth mother. <clears throat> and that tickled my throat. Now, here comes the discussion about birth mother. And mom is about to go off. She's going to go off. Lily! Mother spoke very sharply. Don't say that. There's very little honor in that assignment. That's not how we view moms in our society. It's a very stark contrast between how we value mom <clears throat> and how they value mom. There's very little honor in that assignment of being birth mother. Let's continue. It's kind of a disturbing statement. <clears throat> but I was talking to Natasha, you know, the 10 who lives around the corner. She does some volunteer hours at the birthing center. The birthing center? So they have a center dedicated to birthing. Okay, this is getting odd. And she told me that the birth mothers get wonderful food. And they, and they have very gentle exercise periods. And most of the time, they just play games and amuse themselves while they're waiting. I think I like that. Luke, <laughs> Lukey, Lily said pet petulantly, petulantly. Three years, mother told her firmly. Three births, and that's all. After that, they are laborers for the rest of their adult lives until the day they enter the house of the old. Is that what you want, Lily? Three lazy years and then hard physical labor until you are old? Okay, so they have a birthing center. We have these people called birth mothers. They're there for three years. They give birth three times, and then they go to this place called the, um, the, and they do hard physical labor for the rest of their lives. And then they go to a place called the House of the Old. Now, we have a place called the House of the Old. I mean, we have a place. It's called a, a nursing home, right? We, we have that type of thing. Um, <clears throat> so you have those three lazy years and it's physical labor. It's like, wait a second. This is, this is weird. Three births and you go to the House of the Old. Well, no, I guess not. Lily acknowledged reluctantly. Father turned the new child onto his tummy in the basket. He sat beside it and rubbed its small back with a rhythmic motion. Anyway, Lily Billy, he said affectionately. 
the birth mothers never even get to see new children. If you enjoy the little one so much, you should hope for an assignment as a nurturer. <clears throat> Wait a minute. These ladies give birth to a child and never get to see it. That lets you know how important actual moms are in this process. So it's so weird. Okay. When you're an eight and you start your volunteering hours, you can try and get some at the nurturing center. Mother suggested. That's the wrong voice. Yes, I think I will. Lily said. She knelt beside the basket. What did you say his name is? Gabriel? Hello, Gabriel, she said in a sing-song voice. Then she giggled. Oops, she whispered. I think he's asleep. I guess I'd better be quiet. Jonas turned to his school assignments on his desk. So, um, some chance of that, he thought. Lily was never quiet. Probably she, <clears throat> she should hope for an assignment as speaker so that she could sit in an office with a microphone all day making announcements. <laughs> he laughed silently to himself, picturing his sister droning on in some on in the self-important voice that all speakers seem to develop, saying things like, Attention, this is a reminder to females under nine that hair ribbons are to be neatly tied at all times. He turned toward Lily and noticed to his satisfaction that her hair ribbons were, as usual, undone and dangling. There would be an announcement like that quite soon, he felt certain, and it would be directed mainly at Lily, though her name, of course, would not be mentioned. Everyone would know. Everyone had known, he remembered with humiliation, that announcement. Attention! This is a reminder to males 11s that objects are not to be removed from the recreation area and that snacks are to be eaten, not hoarded. Let me interject here for a second. How do they know that Lily's hair ribbons are normally undone? How do they know that Jonas took something from the recreation area, a snack with him. How do they know that? I'm thinking this is a lot like, uh, you guys haven't read this book, but it's called 1984. <clears throat> um, and it's very dark. It's very adult. So I would not recommend reading it, but I'm just going to relate back to it. Um, big brother was what the government was called. Um, in there. And if you're like, oh, Big Brother, oh, there's a TV show like that, which is very ironic because I believe that's where the premise came from, where you're always being watched. But video cameras, I have a firm belief that they are videotaped everywhere. Otherwise, how else would they know if her hair ribbons weren't tied? How else would they know that Jonas took a snack? You know? To be eaten, not hoarded, had been specifically directed at him. The last the day last month that he had taken an apple home. No one had mentioned it. Not even his parents, because the public announcement had been sufficient to produce the appropriate remorse. He had, of course, disposed of the apple and made his apology to the recreation director the next morning before school. Jonas thought about that incident. He was still bewildered by it, but not by the announcement or the necessary apology. Those were standard procedure, and we've gone over that, and he had deserved them, but by the incident itself. He probably should have brought up this feeling of bewilderment that e very evening when the family unit had shared their feelings of the day, but he had not been able to sort out and put words to the source of his confusion, so he had let it pass. It happened during the recreation period when he had been playing with Asher, okay? Big, big thing happening. Okay. And normally in class, I would actually, ha I would read this and I'd have people, I'd have an Asher character stand up and we would be doing this stuff, but just visualize it as I read it. And then I'll go back. I'm not going to stop in the middle because I want you to visualize this. So as you're reading along or as you're listening, visualize this scene. Okay. It had happened during the recreation period when he had been playing with Asher. Jonas had casually picked up an apple from the basket where the snacks were kept and had thrown it to his friend. Asher had thrown it back, and they had begun a simple game of catch. There had been nothing special about it. It was an activity that he had performed countless times. Throw, catch, throw, catch. It was effortless for Jonas, and even boring, though Asher enjoyed it. And playing catch was a required activity for Asher because it would improve his hand-eye coordination, 
which was not up to standards. But suddenly Jonas had noticed the following, the path of the apple through the air with his eyes, that the piece of fruit had, well, this was the part that he couldn't under, adequately understand. The apple had changed just for an instant. It had changed in midair, he remembered. Then it was in his hand and he looked at it carefully. But it was the same apple, unchanged, the same size and shape, a perfect sphere, the same nondescript shade, not the same shade as his own tunic. There's absolutely nothing remarkable about that apple. He tossed it back and forth between his hands a few times and then <clears throat> thrown it to, again to Asher and again in the air for an instant only. It had changed. It had happened four times. Jonas had blinked, looked around, and then tested his eyesight, squinting at the small print on the identification badge attached to his tunic. He read his name quite <clears throat> clearly. He could also he could also see clearly see Asher at the other end of the throwing area. And he had no problem catching the apple. Jonas had been completely mystified. Ash, he called. Does anything strange seem strange to you about this apple? Yeah, Asher called back laughing. It jumps out of my hand onto the ground. Asher had just dropped it once again. So Jonas too. So Jonas laughed too. And with his laughter, tried to ignore his uneasy conviction that something had happened. But he had taken the apple home against the recreation rules. And that evening, before his parents and Lily arrived at the dwelling, he had held it in his hands and looked at it carefully. It was slightly bruised now because Asher had dropped it several times. But there was nothing at all unusual about the apple. He had held a magnifying glass to it. He had tossed it several times across the room, watching and then rolled it around on, the, on his desktop, waiting for the thing to happen again. But it hadn't. The only thing that had happened was the announcement later that evening over the speaker, the announcement that had singled him out without using his name, that had caused both of his parents to glance meaningfully at his desk where the apple still lay. Now sitting at his desk, staring at his schoolwork, as his family hovered over the new child in its basket, he shook his head, trying to forget the odd incident. He forced himself to arrange his papers and try to study a little before the evening meal. <clears throat> the new child Gabriel stirred and whimpered, and father spoke softly to Lily, explaining the feeding procedure as he opened the container that held the formula and equipment. The evening proceeded as all evenings did in the family unit, in the dwelling, in the community. Quiet, reflective, a time for renewal and preparation for the day to come. It was different only in the addition to it of the new child with his pale, solemn, knowing eyes. Okay, so I slowly read that section about the tossing back and forth with the apple. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I can't help that. In my, um, in your response questions, it says, sum up the events that happened based on the passage. So who, you know, it's Asher and Jonas. What happened? When did it happen? Where did it happen? Now, I do want to call something else. This issue with the apple changing, again, you get the reference back to the eyes. Something's happening with his eyes, his vision. That, again, is another F-bomb, another foreshadowing bomb, another F-word. That foreshadowing, it's happening with his vision. This is very important. It's, it, it, it is like that thing. And it's even coming a little bit true to pass from like looking deep into the river, like down where something might lurk again. And it's mentioning that the apple is changing. Now, I do want to call out that the apple, it said it was a nondescript shade right here. It actually says it a nondescript shade about the same shade as his tunic. <clears throat> okay. I'm not getting any clear colors from 
the description here. Jonas is not thinking in clear colors. So the apple is a nondescript shade. We know what color the apple is. Well, normally we know what color the apple is because we have different colors, but most likely it's going to be a red color, but it's a nondescript shade. So he's looking at it and he says it's about the sh same shade as this tunic. A tunic is like a long shirt, a very plain uh, tunics. Lots of times come down um, to the hips. They can come down a little bit further. If you want to know what a tunic is, you can go ahead and you can Google it. Um, I wouldn't do it necessarily right now, but again, the nondescript shade, all of these are descriptions of things you see every single one not a single one of them is like something like you do it all happens with his vision he said he even looked at it with a magnifying glass everything that takes place is, is it has to do with vision okay vision and that right there um the eyes you know the apple it's all symbolic as well man i love the story okay and i love how los Lowry ends this it says it the, it was different only in the addition to it of the new child with his pale, solemn, knowing eyes. Oh my gosh. Knowing eyes, man, if she could drop any more foreshadowing in your lap, I mean, she might as well just tell you the story. Eyes, pay attention to the eyes, pay attention to Jonas's vision, pay attention to like colors, pay attention to this thing. Like so much is happening in these first three chapters. It just gets me so excited. I just love it. All right. You've been chilling here with Mr. Cook for chapter three of The Giver, uh, the response questions. I love being here with you guys. If you guys have questions, go ahead and contact your teacher, either Mrs. Thompson or Miss Nelson. Um, and by the way, we're going to be switching off chapters. So after chapter five, you're going to get a new teacher to teach you. So it's going to be kind of cool. We're kind of, we're kind of like a, the tripod or the triangle, if you will, you know, all three points and we're all going to do this together. All right. We miss you guys. Take it easy. Take it easy. All you cool cats and kittens.